face my camp here, uh, see some different things, clear my mind, be away from a lot of distractions. Uh, but just ultimately get that good training, get that good endurance, and you know, make sure I can be in the best possible shape. Uh, so much has been said about Gennady Golovkin's perception is that he's the most fair middleweight out there. Um, what, what do you expect from him from fight time? Well, I don't expect to fear him from I don't fear him. Uh, I can see why people say that, but you know, I'm a, I'm a fighter through and through. I don't, I don't fear any person. And to go inside that ring with a fear mentality, I mean, why even go inside the ring, you know? Um, I know as a fighter you don't want to feel his power, but the question arises throughout the media and fans that could you take this punch? What, what do you take to that question? Why is that question uh, being asked? times in my career. I mean, if, you know, you want to question that about me being two times, I, it's understandable. Uh, and he's also a very, very strong guy and he's put out a lot of different guys as well. Um, so I can understand why the questions are there. But it's just up to me to prove, you know, that I'm bigger than that, that I'm stronger, that I'm better, and that I can prevent those things. And uh, as for yourself, the questions you have in part of Gennady Golovkin, Kilbrook seemed like he was able to rock him during their fight. He's a much smarter fighter. Uh, if, if you land on him, what, what do you expect? What could you do if you're able to land clean on him? What, what do you expect? I don't know what to expect. I, we don't know how truly he take hand, and handles punches, big punches. Uh, but if, if he allows me to hit him, then I guess we'll see at that present time. Learning a lot about how I can implement these things in the training camp. And I look forward to, you know, really just playing in the fight. Definitely. And so another question for you is, in New York, um, your training camps are held in, in your basement, correct? So you have a kind of a basement <laughs> gym there. Yeah. And then coming here to Snack, which is, you know, um, state-of-the-art technology, and then coming to Virgil Hunter's gym and things like that. Just tell us about the difference in just kind of, you know, the media stir here versus kind of secluding yourself in New York and everything like that. How does this work for you? Well, I mean... I knew if I was to be stationed in New York that, you know, they would, the request of media work would be nonstop, you know, and I understand, you know, that they want to promote this fight, but I understand also that this is the biggest fight of my career, and I wanted to isolate myself so that I can focus on this fight and the fight alone. Um, the media is fine and it's great, but it has its time. You know, my main job is to make sure that I'm prepared uh, for being inside the ring. But being in New York and being in Brooklyn and Long Island with the distractions and the traffic and all the crazy stuff, I mean, I just wanted to separate myself. And being a color commentator, how much do you wish that you could call your own fight? <laughs> I do wish I could call this fight. I think it would be uh, it would be a really good fight to call. You always, I always love like the underdog stories. You know when they actually come out on top, and you know no one gives them a shot, and everyone says that this is going to be that. But I mean, I've proven time and time again that you know when my back is against the wall, you know I can prevail. Definitely. And I've seen the game. You know, you grow in this sport. You know, if I was to be to remain the same kid that I was then, I wouldn't be here at this level now. So, you know, I think that speaks volumes. And I think people are going to always look for something to criticize. And the easiest thing to criticize is the loss uh, that I took in with Pirov. But, you know, I know it's the sport of boxing, you're always going to have to prove yourself. You know, Mayweather gets scrutinized through his whole entire career. It's like, what else do he have to prove? But people still criticize him. So who am I to say that, you know, I'm subjected to that, you know? Speaking of criticism, some people said you were ducking the fight, you didn't want the fight because of this December no negotiations. Can you tell the fans a little bit about the business side that was going on? Well, see, what people don't understand, and I get it from a frustrating fan perspective, especially when they don't know the business side or how it, how it goes. You know, we fight for a living. You know, I fight for my family. I want to make sure I'm compensated accordingly. And you said it best. You know, they're making this guy out to be the biggest guy. They're making him out to be the superstar. He's selling out arenas. So pay me accordingly. If he's the superstar guy, if he's the main man, why would I not want to get compensated accordingly? If this is the biggest fight that could be made at middleweight, then why not want to get paid accordingly? And, and that was the, re the main reason why it has taken so long, because it's supposed to be scheduled for December, uh, but now that it's in March, uh, the paperwork was right. I'm, I'm happy with uh, the business side of it and uh, you know, the training part. 
that's all up to me now. It's my job to get in there and do my job. And then lastly, fighting at home for a big and dangerous fight, New York, how's that feel? It feels great. I just feel like, you know, I wouldn't want to have it any, any place in the world other than New York because the Mecca of boxing, Madison Square Garden, is, I mean, it's historic, you know, and this is one of those historic fights, you know. So I believe in my, from a, from a fan and from my own perspective, I just feel like it couldn't have been at a better place because New York fans are the best. Uh, the Mecca of boxing throughout the history of the world has been the number one place for big, extravagant fights. Uh, so me being a New Yorker is just icing on the cake. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, Dan. Um, my first question is, I noticed that you brought your whole team out here with you. How good does that feel? Because I know you're moving locations, but it feels good to see familiar faces. Talk about the atmosphere, your coaches, and all that. It feels great. I mean, to have my whole team come out here and to have that home feeling away from home is everything. You know, it plays into my mental. I don't feel like, you know, I'm out here on my own. I'm doing things that I've never done before. I have my whole team and uh, my family actually came out to see me one time, you know, so that was incredible. So I don't feel like the sacrifice of being away is bad. You know? I feel like it's a great sacrifice because it's mixed. You know, me being a dad too, you know, me being able to see my son is just, you know, it's everything. But, you know, when you make a sacrifice like this and you've been away for weeks upon weeks upon weeks, it just, you know, it, it adds to that fury, it adds to that, you know, that motivation to get in there and, <laughs> Berto, it, it adds to that motivation. And I, I hear a lot of people with you, they talk about the mental side, but I don't think people understand the hell you went through when you were outside of boxing. Is there anything that Eddie Galop can mentally bring to you that you didn't have to go when you were outside of boxing, surviving cancer, losing a loved one? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I mean, the physical challenges that I faced with learning how to walk again and going through chemo and radiation and all those different things, I mean, that was that was the lowest of the lows. I mean, there's nothing in this, in this world, including the fight with, with Janani Golovkin, that can mentally break me or mentally make me fearful of overcoming. I mean, I almost died, you know. I'm not going to die inside that ring. You know, it's a different type of... Different type of, uh, it's different levels. Very good context to the sport. I'm kind of hearing where, like, this is real life as opposed to, like, you're the best at a competition. Right, it's still a sport. I mean, it's a sport where you can get hurt, but in the same time, it's, it's a sport. You know, I'm just looking forward to being the best in this sport, being the best in my division, and proving that I'm one of the best in the world. And finally, from me, um, I know you talked about the snack training. Can you go a little bit more about that hypoxic, all that cool stuff? Is there any of those supplements that you're like taking, man? Because I'm trying to get fit. <laughs> <laughs> well, the hypoxic trainer, uh, um, uh, what is the bubble? And just the different workouts that I'm never, I haven't really been used to doing. And it's already taken uh, an effect on me. I mean, I can go 12 rounds now, even though we're kind of pacing ourselves. But, you know, I feel really good. Uh, I feel really good working with those guys. They've added a little niche to my training and my condition. And uh, like I've said before, I'm used to, I'm looking forward to implementing all those things come fight night. <laughs>